All right then, so when we have a website, typically there's loads of different events going on inside the website when a user browses it. Things like hover events, or click events, or form submission events, keyboard events, scroll events, loads and loads. Now in this video, we're just gonna look at click events, which is when a user clicks on something. And I'm gonna show you how it can react to those events by running some code. So, first of all, let's create a button inside the home component underneath the H2 and the text is gonna be click me. So I want to react now to a user clicking on this button and I wanna fire a function when they do that. So first of all, I'm gonna create this function inside the home component function at the top and we'll store it in a constant which I'm gonna call handle click and typically you'll see the different functions called something like this like handle click or handle mouse over or handle submit or something like that that's just a naming convention but you can call the functions whatever you want so inside this arrow function all i'm going to do is log a message to the console and the message is going to be hello ninjas all right so if i now save this nothing's going to happen when i click on this because i've not linked up this function to this button so it doesn't know to run that function yet let's open the console already anyway just so we can see that in a minute so then how do we hook this up well all we need to do is come to the button and say on click with a capital c and set that equal to a dynamic value so curly braces and we just pass in a function reference so whatever the function is called which is handle click now we don't invoke the function because if we were to save this then it's going to invoke this automatically without the user even clicking on it and we can see this log to the console right away we don't want to do that we don't want to invoke it we just want to set a reference to that function right here then when a user clicks on this it will invoke that function for us so let's save this i'm going to clear out the console and let's click on this and it works click again it does it again so that's how we can create a function and assign it to an element so that it fires when a user clicks on it by using this on click property right here and then passing in a function reference so what if we want to pass in an argument to the function for example if i wanted to pass in a name well normally what we do is use parentheses and pass in the name for example yoshi right but like i said before if we do this then it's gonna automatically invoke this function right away because the parentheses invoke the function. So we can't do this if we want to pass in an argument. Instead, we have to wrap this inside an anonymous function. So I'm gonna do another button to demo this. So I'll say click me again, and then up here, I'm gonna create another function. So const, and I'll call this handle click again, and set it equal to an arrow function. And inside here, we're going to take as a parameter the name, okay? And I'll log that to the console. So console.log, and then I'll say hello, and I'll concatenate the name. So plus name. You could use a template string if you wish. I'm just using concatenation. So now I want to fire this function when we click on this button. So again, on click is equal to a dynamic value, which is handle click again. Okay. So now, if we save it, it's going to fire this function, but we're not passing in the name yet. And like I said, we can't pass that in directly right here because it's going to invoke that function. So how do we do this? Well, we do need to pass in the argument. So let's just do that. I'm going to pass in Mario. And then what we need to do is then wrap this inside an anonymous function. So let me cut this for now. And instead, I'm just going to do an arrow function right here like so. Now this is a function which will then fire when a user clicks on this button. So inside here, I could just say console.log hello, right? And this is gonna do the same thing as this. We're not invoking this function right here. We're just referencing it, right? It's an anonymous one. We don't store it in a constant or anything like that. We just create it directly here, but we're still not invoking that. And then when a user clicks on this button, it's gonna fire the function. So let's test this out first of all. Click me again and we see hello. So now what we could do is inside this function, we could just 
invoke this other function. So now this is not going to be invoked straight away because it's being wrapped in an anonymous function which isn't firing to begin with. So only now when we click on this button it fires this function and then invokes the other one which passes in the name. So if I save this now it should work. Click me again. Hello Mario. Awesome. So that works. Now if I wanted to I could do this all in one line by bringing this up and bringing this up as well and we don't really need these curly braces now because it's on one line for the function so let's delete that one and this one we still keep these curly braces because this signifies a dynamic value the other ones were just for the anonymous function so this is still going to work let me save that and test again and we see hello mario awesome so that works now one more thing i want to show you is the event object or the event parameter that we automatically get access to inside these functions when an event occurs. So this one right here where we just reference a function it automatically gains as the first parameter the event object and then we can do something with that event object. Let me just log it to the console so you can see the different information on that object. If I save it and come over here and click this first button we see hello ninjas but then also this event object and we can see all of these different properties about the event if we wanted to use them now what about the other one because we don't automatically get it as a first argument inside this function because it's not being referenced as the function this one right here this anonymous function gets access to the event object automatically. Then if we want to use it inside our custom function, we can just pass it in as an argument and it can be first or second, it doesn't really matter. So I can pass it in right here. So I take the automatic argument from the function that wraps this and pass it into this custom function as a second argument. And then I can use it inside this function so after name I could say e and then say I just want the target I could use the target property for example that was just one of the properties on this object and then if I click on this we can see we get the event target awesome so that's how we can react to click events in our components